Welcome to The Rant. I'm your host, Herman James, and on today's episode, we'll be talking to lawyer David Becerra about his action pack he's created for fathers fighting for child custody. This part of the podcast is brought to you by Libsyn. Are you looking to start a podcast or want to know where to move your podcast to to get the best possible outcome? Libsyn is the top-rated host for your podcast. Use promo code HERMAN for your first month free. Hey everyone, I'm Austin. I'm Miguel. I'm Brian. And we're the Off the Muda Scale Wrestling Podcast. We bring weekly reviews for WWE Raw and SmackDown, as well as AEW Dynamite. Uh, we also cover each WWE and AEW pay-per-view, as well as those other companies at times. Tune in each Sunday for new episodes from the Mouse and Minds of Lifelong Wrestling Fans. Check out the Off the Muda Scale Wrestling Podcast. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for making the rant what it is today. As the intro said, on today's episode, we have lawyer David Pacera on to talk about his online course he's recommending for dads trying to help win custody of their kids. David, how are you doing? I'm great, man. It's good to be here. I'm really glad to talk with you again. It's been a couple years, I think. I think so. It's it's been a little bit. I I also can't tell because COVID feels like it's been going on for ten years. So I, I can't tell the time frame anymore. <laughs> that's that's so true. I mean, I, honestly, I feel like the entire last twelve months just sort of like evaporated. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. I can't tell. But hey, sooner or later, anything. it's going to be over. Yeah, they keep saying that. I thought that was the way it was supposed to be in March and. And then I thought it was supposed to be that way when it got warm. And then I thought that was the way after I sucked on Clorox napkins and now <laughs> vaccines. And I don't know. Sucking on Clorox napkins. That sounds like uh, quite a way to spend the Friday evening. Yeah. It, it'll get you places. Nowhere good. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a... A course that you have developed to help educate men. Last time we talked about, uh, you know, you're kind of representing men in, was it divorce cases and custody cases and trying to get them a better representation than they would typically have with themselves or with other uh, individuals in court where in California specifically, it's not exactly a dad friendly, man friendly environment when it comes to divorce and children. I guess that is irrelevant if it's dad and dad's getting divorces now. Honestly, you know, the dad and dad thing rarely even happens. Um, I I think we're going to find over the long haul that gay marriages are probably more stable. Lesbian marriages is a whole other different psychological dynamic. (laughs) Um, So we got to separate those out just because they're, they're very different. I mean, the reality is they're very different. Yeah, but see, um, but my brother's typical... on his third uh, third partner now, and he's been married twice. So I, you say the male gay marriage is different than the lesbians, and my brother's racking up quite a husband record already. <laughs> Damn, keep him, uh, keep him, keep him close. <laughs> maybe, maybe I could use him. Let's see, there you go. Um, but honestly, in my experience, you know, what I'm seeing is primarily with your stereotypical heterosexual couples, whether they're married or not married, but have kids together, men have a lot of problems going into family court because they're under the impression that they can walk in, they can tell the judge their side of the story, and they're going to walk out with 50% custody. And there is just nothing that's further from the truth. They have to walk into court and they have to explain to the judge exactly who they are, exactly why they're good fathers, and demonstrate with facts how they are actually the great dad that they say they are when they tell the judge, I'm a great dad, which they may be. I'm not saying they're not. But if all you do is tell a judge that you're a great dad, they're not going to hear that because they've heard that same thing from the previous 300 guys. And what they're hearing from mom is he doesn't show up on time. He doesn't know how to take care of the kids. He doesn't know their favorite foods. He doesn't know their food allergies. He doesn't know their school teachers. He doesn't know their best friends. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't. And what ends up happening is the judge is like, well, I think we're just going to let mom have control here. 
And so what I did was I recognized that there's this giant need because, you know, a lot of guys can't come up with five or $10,000 to hire a lawyer. I mean, for God's sakes, these lawyers are expensive, <laughs> but they need the information. They need the help. So what I did was I created the dad's action pack and it's a short little 80 minute course that's designed to like walk guys through like Here's what the judge is going to be thinking. Here's what your ex is going to be saying. And here's how you need to be presenting yourself with an inventory of all the information you know about your kids. And here's how you put that in a declaration that's going to convince the judge that, hey, you actually are a great dad. You're an active and engaged father who knows what's going on in his kid's life. When you say you want more time with your kids, now mom's got to overcome that and give the judge a reason why you shouldn't. So that's why I created the Dad's Action Pack. Nice. And where can this be found? Uh, if you go to mensfamilylawcenter.com backslash action pack, all one word, uh, you can go to there's a landing page there and there's a little video by me and sort of an explanation of what the course is. It's, you know, an 80 minute course, give or take a couple. Uh, $97 and you know, you're in and you're out and you've got some tools when you're going in to judge to, to go in and talk to the judge uh, to present your case more effectively. One of the things I do is I, I, I share with guys like some basic speaking tips on how to actually present yourself to the judge, not just like, here's my papers, which are very important because that's the first thing the judge is going to see is your declaration. But then when you're actually in front of the judge, like, how do you talk to this person and how do you present yourself and what do you wear? Because a lot of times guys are scared with public speaking. They've never really done a whole lot of it. So I go over some basics of what makes a good public speaker and what are you going to be experiencing your first time going in, doing something that's so crucial to your life that you don't really have a whole lot of practice and training for. Now, how do you take into account that statistically, the women are getting a majority of custody, whether it's full or partial or however it may be, more so than men. And a lot of what I hear from my own personal experience of those going into custody court and a battle like that, it's a lot of he said, she said, and it's she's badder, uh, badgering him, saying he does this and he's saying she does that. And they're both basically talking trash on each other to bring each other down to see which is the you know, least worst person to take a child because hearing both sides makes you think both of these parents suck and neither of them should have a child. Well, there's certainly a fair amount of that. But one of the things that we do in the dad's action pack is I explain how you actually lay out your argument to the judge. And the way you do that is you, you bring in evidence. You have documents to show the judge like, this is why you're a good dad. Here's the proof that you actually went to the movies. Here's the proof that you took the kids and you did something with them. Here are the receipts. And one of the things that happens in family court is, yeah, there's a lot of mudslinging. But if somebody's not actually supporting what they have to say, the judge is going to not believe them if the other side actually has documents to support them. So when mom says he's never around, he never uses a visitation, he doesn't do anything with the kids, and dad walks in with the dad calendar and says, well, here are the days I was supposed to see the kids, and here are the receipts stapled to those days of the things we did, and here I can tell you exactly what we did and where we went and how the kids had a great time, suddenly it turns out like, oh, mom's not telling the complete truth to the judge. And that's what swings things in your favor. Okay. So oftentimes, yeah, women win because they go into court and they sort of like badger the judge with all these long, this long list of things that you haven't done as a father. And dad's just sitting there going, but I'm a great dad. And that's not going to cut it. And well, how does the idea of like infidelity, if that was the call, if that was considered a cause for separation or for divorce or, the bringing in of new partners, consistent new people. Is that something that plays heavily within these kind of judgments as well? 
that seems to be, at least for me, what I see on TV, seems to be what people talk a lot about and say is what is an unhealthy environment for kids. So the new girlfriend, the new boyfriend, the infidelity issues, judges generally don't care about. Okay. What they will care about is if there's an allegation that the new girlfriend or the new boyfriend are abusive or there's a reason why they should not be around the kids. So the judge might say, like, listen, I don't care that you got a new girlfriend, but don't bring the girlfriend around the kids. And that's a, a good or a bad thing. I'm not really certain. Depends on the case. But the fact that you stepped out on your girlfriend or your wife, judge doesn't really care anymore. I mean, that's just not a factor. This okay. is, you know, 2021. Everybody's <laughs> sleeping around with everybody. Not during COVID times. So don't sleep with anybody. I would assume. That's true. Not even <laughs> yourself. <laughs> so tons of, you know, KY being sold and no one's going on dates. It's a, it's a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> So now is there a fiscal aspect to this in terms of if, you know, mom saying dad never pays his agreed upon, not regulated by the court, but agreed upon alimony or fiscal amount where it's, he's supposed to pay half the rent or half the mortgage or pay for the kids schooling or X, Y, and Z. Is that something that's going to come into effect when it comes to the custody battle of it, where you have money, but you're not showing that you're giving it or they physically aren't doing it where they can't put up more money because you know the partner now wants to have them pay more money to do more things but they can't physically do it is that going to hinder the parent from being able to have custody of that child no the money issue is just a money issue and the judges generally keep those separate from the custody issues um the parties frequently like want to tie the two things together. They want to say like, well, I have the kids more, so you should give me more money. Or, well, if you gave me the kids more, I wouldn't have to pay you as much. So that's what's going on there is there's definitely this time for dollars BS that everybody plays. But the courts are like, listen, have we got a court order? If there's a court order in place, pay your child support. If there's not a court order in place, we don't care. It's your own. You guys got to figure that part out. All right. And see, that's what I've always heard from people that parents split up when we were younger. So we hear about it now because now they consider it okay to bring up. And even in my own life, I've got friends that have deadbeat dads in their lives where these guys are, you know, coming in. They had children with these people and how they did that. I I don't even want to rationalize that brain chemistry, but they did have kids and, now the dad will come around every now and then or shows up drunk or on their days with the kids, drops them to their parents' house, asks them to watch them. So those to me are my real life situations where I see this on a regular basis where I don't feel those people deserve the right to be around the kid. But on the flip side, it's their biological child and that child at that age needs that parent and wants that parent around. So I fight mentally about whether or not it's a good or a bad thing, but that's because I see it that way. It's not for me a court issue where I think it's more of a black and white. Is that something that's a a typical thing with you seeing it as a black and white or is there a gray zone you kind of try to see with it or how do you uh, process these kind of things? You know, when it comes to family law, pretty much Almost everything is gray. It's just shades of like from white to black. And I, I, I've seen like horrible, horrible parents who are stone cold sober. And I've seen just drunks that are fabulous parents. Because it's about the relationship with the kids. It's about what's good for the kids. It's about are they taking care of the kids needs you know, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. And so it's really hard to make hard and fast rules in family court. I mean, short of like, you know, don't engage in pedophilia. We're pretty much wide open in terms of like, there's a bunch of factors that go into every single situation, which is why it's so hard because 
everybody talks about it. Everybody's like, well, Joe got all 100% custody of his kids. Why aren't you getting 100% custody of your kids? What's wrong with you? And what you didn't know is that Joe's kid's mom was manic depressive and a crackhead (laughs) and kind of went off on like a little mental vacation for three months. It's a okay. very different scenario than if you've got a mom who's essentially pretty much functional. It's going to be a whole lot harder to get 100% custody because there's no reason why that person shouldn't have custody of their kids. Yeah. Now, how hard is it to combat that judgment? Let's say the mom or the dad originally got 75%, 100% custody of the child, and now you're trying to combat that judgment already. Is that... Harder to do too and have that go out uh, versus having it come 50-50 off the bat or have an agreement out that way? Or is it equally difficult either way? It's equally difficult because there's so many other factors that go into all of this stuff. You know, did one parent get primary custody because somebody else was a drug addict? Did one parent get primary custody because the other parent was traveling a lot and wasn't around? Are they just having a bad dynamic and their relationship is so toxic that somebody has to be put in charge because these two people are never going to agree that water is wet? I mean, there's so many things that go into it. And that's one of the reasons why when I created the Dad's Action Pack, I wanted to create a system that allows men to just start telling their side of the story. Because until the judge hears your side of the story in a really clear way, all they see is mud. And it's just a mess. And the easiest thing for them to do is just default to mom gets 80% custody, dad gets 20%. That's every other weekend. Then Wednesday night pizza dinner, let's call it a day. Dad, pay your child support. Now, is there something you would recommend that's maybe in your pack or that's something that's not within that that you think is a key component that is always missed by people when they're going to court to get custody or go to battle, whether it's like you said, proper dressing attire, showing up in your, you know, work jeans and shit kickers with mud on them for me isn't a way to show up to court, but I know people do. I don't think showing up in a camo hat or a MAGA hat is also a way to do it. I I think you should dress appropriately, whether it's a suit or a button down or even a nice polo, but is there something that you see that's habitually wrong? That's an easy fix that people should take into account before they even walk in that courtroom. Yeah. Probably the biggest thing that I do address this in the dad's action pack is not having a plan of what you want to say to the judge because people get up there and they think they're just going to tell their story that I'm a great dad and that's going to work. And then they get panicked because the other side is prepared. And the judge starts asking questions and now the anxiety goes through the roof and you start stammering and your voice goes squeaky because you've got no water. Your, your, your mouth is now dry. Your blood pressure is up. Adrenaline is running through your body. You start panicking because what's happening with the adrenaline is time is actually compressing. And you think like if you take a five second pause, you haven't said anything for five minutes because that's what it feels like. And it just becomes a shit show. (laughs) And if you go into court and you actually have like a sheet of paper with like bullet points that say, oh, I want to talk about Bobby at soccer practice, Bobby at ballet, Bobby at at school. And I want to talk about how Julie handles art class and what's going on with Julia's best friend. At least you'll have a plan to talk to the judge about. The biggest problem is people just walk in there and they think they're going to be able to wing it and you just can't wing this stuff. But I've watched enough TV shows and movies. I should be able to wing it. Come on now. I can, I watch enough medical practices. I could probably do, you know, a heart transplant too. It's on TV. That's enough education. Yeah. And you know what the funny thing about TV is? Everything is scripted. <laughs> And I'm saying the same thing, man. Go in with a script. You got a much better chance of getting what you want. Nice. Now, how often are people going in with these scripts and you're seeing things go the way they should go as it's unfolding in court 
and the judge is still determined to go the other way. Is that something you see on a regular basis? Is it a normal thing? A uh, predetermined judge? I know that there are some judges that you go into court knowing that this judge 80% of the time goes for the mom, no matter what the dad says. Um, there's definitely those judges that I know if I'm representing the man, I'm going to get screwed. Uh, but, and, but that's an individual judge thing. And that's where, you know, you've got to, you've got to know the judge. You've got to know the territory. You've got to know the department. You know, it's, it, that's why I also say like, if you're going into court, even if you can't afford to retain a lawyer, you should still go spend at least 200 bucks and consult with somebody who knows the judge, somebody that actually understands what's going on in that courtroom that can give you some insights into what you'll be facing. Because some judges, you know, going in, like I, I've got a judge in, in, in Los Angeles County that I, I, if I represent a man going in there, it's a dead bang loser. <laughs> just, just, I'm not going to, there's nothing I'm going to win on. That's crazy. Now is how it, it's is crazy, but, yeah. but, but if you know that going in, at least you can be ready for the fact that you're going to get screwed. Now, are you able to request a, a different judge or a different day knowing that, you know, Judge Smith doesn't work on Tuesdays, so you purposefully postpone until that Tuesday? No. When you first get assigned a judge, you have an opportunity to um, to protest and get a different judge. But you've got to have done your homework and you got to know. So that's why it's like you got to jump on this stuff. You can't just let it sit around. You know, if you get a paperwork, you got to find out who the judge is, find out their reputation meet with a lawyer that knows the lay of the land. And then if you're going to be trying to protest that judge, you got to get that paperwork in right away because it's a very short, usually it's like 30, 60 days. You've got to just like get in there and get it filed. Now is someone able to call up a law firm like your own and say, Hey, I've got a court date on this day and I, I want to know what to be prepared for. Like you said, and kind of just, see if that particular firm will say, yes, I know judge Smith or I know judge Abbott or I know judge Jones and they are able to do that. Or do they have to kind of blindly, I was going to say use a phone book, but those don't exist anymore. Uh, Google someone in the area (laughs) and just see kind of what goes on. Um, you know, you can do that. You definitely, I, I really recommend like, for the most part, getting a a paid consult, like go in, spend the money and actually have somebody look at the paperwork, really dig in any professional lawyer who's been doing this for more than five or 10 years. As soon as they look at the paperwork, they know what's going on, what's going on. They, they know the lay of the land and it's going to be well spent money because let me tell you, 200 bucks on the front end is going to cost, going to cost you a whole lot less then when you call me afterwards, and this happens probably three times a week, <laughs> hey, I just got out of court and I got fucked. Can you help me? <laughs> um, I might be able to help you, but it's probably going to cost you about 10 times more than you're ready to pay. Gotta love it. It's the preparedness. Dude, it's brutal. It's just oh, brutal. Yeah. It, it's but, but see, this is why this is one of the reasons why women do so much better in court. Women plan they strategize. They spend two years meeting with lawyers, getting six different opinions. They know what they're doing before they actually walked in the court. Men walk in and they're like, uh, I want my 50% custody. And the judge is like, dude, that ain't going to happen. You ain't prepared at all. Yeah. And just from the women I know, I mean, the ones that have, been separated or have divorces already. They were pre-planning that divorce before the guy knew they were going to get divorced. So they've had premeditated ideas and the processes in their head beforehand that they can kind of elaborate on, at least for the ones I know of, where I honestly don't think that far ahead. I, I can't even plan my week out in a normal, not busy week 
and the weeks nowadays in my life are so jam packed and full of things. I just move from one thing to another to another. So if someone catches me on the fly, I have to be quick. Whereas a lot of the women in my life, they've planned things out for the next six months. And I am flabbergasted at that ability to be able to do that. You ever heard of the comedian Eliza Schlesinger? I don't think so. Oh, dude, you need to check out Eliza Schlesinger. She is brutal. She does this whole riff on where women plan and how they plan and how they set minds for us. They will set a bomb and it's not going to go off for two, three years. And then it's going to go off and blow everything up and you're going to get destroyed. (laughs) It's not wrong. But it's true. (laughs) Women plan their divorces as they're walking down the fucking aisle. I mean, come on. Let's face facts. That's what they do, particularly if it's a second or third relationship. They're already planning this shit going going into it. They're already planning their exit. I think the best story I've ever heard was a a wife was a stay-at-home mom. And she, I think you and I talked about this actually. And she was the uh, one that paid all the bills. The dad went into work, did all the money making, but didn't pay any of the bills. And little by little, she was siphoning off money into her own account before she divorced. And she had tons of money. Yep. The other thing they do is they make sure all of their credit cards get paid off. So they're walking debt free. Yeah. And yours are maxed out. Yeah, it's freaking brilliant. <laughs> yeah, unethical, immoral, bad yeah. long term relationships. But yeah, sort of. Yeah. It is. It's bad all the way around. But the guy got the twenty year old model, and sh- and she walked away debt free with all of your money. So it, it win win win. <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of, something like that. <laughs> It's 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 a weird so, world world we work into, and I know that at the beginning of COVID and coming into this environment, they were talking about this big baby boom coming in because everyone's going to be in home with their spouses and be banging all the time, and now they're banging less because they're home all the time, and the baby boom is a baby bust, and the divorce rates are apparently on the rise, which is an interesting twist to all of it. Yep. But the good news is there will be a change as soon as we get back to normal. Because yeah, herpes is going to be on gonna the gonna rise. People, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and we're going to see it happen because the women are planning to get pregnant and the men aren't planning to wear condoms. No, after a, a year of being uh, whatever single people do, I don't know what they do now. I mean, I, I've been in a relationship for a very, very long time. So my friends that are single are, they're trying to go on dates on these, these, uh, dating apps. And I say it like I'm a 90 year old man. And I, I don't quite understand how they plan things out because they go out into public and they are trying to interact with people, but they're wearing masks, but not wearing masks and then having coffee, but being in close proximity. And then some are just banging freely because, it's just, they need to. And these are women I'm talking about. These aren't even men. These are just women that I know that do this. So it's it's yeah. an interesting twist of how the world has changed in just a small amount of time and that I know of. I'm still used to going to a bar or going in public and talking to people and trying to go on dates that way. That's just the normal thing for me. And apps are now the new thing of doing it and catfishing and... I guess now you have to worry about getting a solar winds virus and less of a venereal disease. It's just, yeah, it's a different world. It's all fucking crazy, man. <laughs> I got, I got no real love for any of this stuff other than the fact that it's just going to keep making me money. And, and that's what needs to be done. You need to have your own living with it. And I, I think if anything, your industry is a uh, COVID proof. If anything, I would assume if the, the rates are going higher, you're getting a, a, a quite nice bump from the COVID times. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I mean, it's definitely picked up as a consequence of it. Yeah. And see, I think that's a benefit for your industry and, uh, Hopefully we can get some education out there for everybody else on doing this. Um, so I'd like to see if we can wrap this up for you real quick. Where can everyone find your website for you? And I'll put it in the podcast description below. And if you're listening on YouTube, it'll be in there as well. Uh, if you go to mensfamilylawcenter.com backslash action pack, it'll take you right to the action pack sign up page. Very nice. And can anyone find you on social media or are you just staunchly against it? No, no. We're all over the place. It's real simple. It's Men's Family Law on Twitter, on um, YouTube, on Facebook. Um, those are the big ones for us. You're not on uh, Parlor. <laughs> No, you know, I, I checked out the parlor <laughs> thing and um, I just I, I don't have the time for parlor with between the Twitter and all the other stuff that's going on. And now there's this new clubhouse thing. It's like, oh, my God. Plus, I got my own podcast on iTunes, which is just men's family law. There's a whole series there of different things. Um, and if you go to the YouTube channel, we've got, I think, 63 different videos right now talking about how to lower your child support, and how to deal with your domestic violence restraining order. So it's basically... Type in Men's Family Law, and you're pretty much going to find me. If you go to mensfamilylawcenter.com backslash action pack, you'll find the action pack for dads. Nice. All right, everyone. Make sure to check out that website. Check out the podcast as well. We'll have all the links for the description in the description here below, as well as on YouTube. If I am smart enough, and I'm probably not, we'll put a link to the actual YouTube channel in the upper corner here on the YouTube channels for you. So make sure to check everything out to support David. And if you are in need of any support for your divorce or child family law, make sure to give David a call or email. We'll have all the contact information in this podcast description as well as all over his website. David, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Hey man, my pleasure. It's great chatting with you. Go have a great night. You too. Enjoy. Thanks, dude.